Dear students, welcome back to Odelia vlog. Today we can start the first module of research methodology. As your exam is on February 22nd, 2023, we will focus on a brief revision on each module. Today's contents are of the first module, research its meaning, objectives and significance. What is the research methodology? Research process and its steps. Criteria for a good research and types of research. First of all, research. We all know research is a search for knowledge. It's a process of discovering unknown and rediscovering the known. Now, we all know before planets were nine, but now there are only eight planets because Pluto is no more a planet. That's a uh, after effect of this research. So, we can rediscover the known things and rediscover the unknown things using research. Now, we can focus into the objectives of research. First one is to explore. Research can be carried out with the purpose of gaining familiarity with a topic or to gain insight into unexplored areas. Second one is to describe. Research can be carried out with the objectives describing a particular situation or event or an individual. Third one is to diagnose. When a study is carried out with the objective of finding out how frequently an event is associated with another event, it is termed as diagnostic study. For example, doctors, they are referring to uh, different lab examinations and after the results come, they will verify what is the disease. So, that is also a uh, research. Next one is to establish a causal relationship. A research can be done to find out the causal relationship between dependent variable and independent variable. Dependent variable is one whose value will change. For example, polio vaccine, that is an independent variable. But the effectiveness in controlling polio, that is the dependent variable. Another example for your, um, uh, for understanding this relationship sleep dependent variable mark is an independent variable how much we sleep that depends on that that is the dependent variable on which the mark depends okay understood another one is demand and price okay demand is a dependent variable price is an independent variable now we can go to the significance significance of research includes the following first it can help in gathering necessary information helps in making changes helps in improving standard of living it ensures a safer life it helps in exploring our history it helps in understanding artistic works so these are the significance of research now we can go to what is research methodology research methodology is a science of methods it's a process of conducting research. Actually, you will have sometimes a question, what is the difference between research method and research methodology? What is research method? It refers to all the techniques that have been used for conducting the research. The techniques will include observation method, interview, or attitude measurements, etc. But research methodology is a process of conducting research it, it not only describes the steps involved in conducting the research, but also it justifies the choice of various methods and it states the limitations of the research and also it brings out the presuppositions and consequences in conducting the research. So you might have the question what is meant by research methodology and what is the difference between research methodology? Now we can focus on research process and it includes 12 steps. The various steps that are necessary to carry out a research effectively is known as a research process. The first step, identifying, evaluating and formulating the research problem. After creating interest in a research, the researcher has to formulate the problem related to his research work. Choosing a correct problem for the study is the most important step. For the researcher after selecting the problem he has to formulate the problem 
by first understanding and evaluating it thoroughly. And the next step he has to do is to rephrase the research problem into meaningful terms from an analytical point of view. A researcher should take utmost care in formulating the problem without any scope for confusions. Second one is extensive literature survey. The researcher should examine all the available literature, both conceptual and empirical. Conceptual literature is one which deals with the concepts and theories. Empirical literature is that which contains uh, much facts and figures which are studied earlier and hence these two literatures will help the researcher to know about the data and materials available for operational purposes. Third step is writing a primary synopsis. After formulating the problem, a brief summary of it should be written down. A research worker has to write down a synopsis of the topic selected for the research. And for that, this will help him to, give, to have an idea about the facts and figures to be collected and the interpretations to be made. And hence, an extensive literature survey is needed academic journals, attending conferences, proceedings, government reports, books, etc. must be considered for reference and also he can, con he can refer documents just like personal documents, public documents, etc. for valuable information. Next step is setting, um, I mean, identifying and labeling variables. In any research, the problem under study deals with the relationship between dependent variable and independent variable. Therefore, there is a cause and effect relationship between the two. The variable which has effect is called dependent variable. The variable whose change has affected the other variable is called independent variable. For example, demand that is a dependent variable, price that is an independent variable. Next step is setting up of hypothesis. A researcher should state the hypothesis which is to be laid down in the research work. Hypothesis is a tentative assumption that should be drawn out before conducting a research. The hypothesis guides the research by delimiting the area of research, the types of data required and the method used for analysis. Next step is preparing the research design. Research design is the blueprint of a research. It's a plan that specifies the sources and types of information relevant to the research problem. It includes the time and cost budgets since most studies are done under these two constraints. It enables the researcher to carry out the project within the given time and available means and manpower for the achievement of the objectives. A research design usually contains clear statement of research problem, procedure and techniques to be used for gathering information, population to be studied, methods to be used in processing and analyzing the data. Next step is determining sample design. Very often it is not possible to conduct the study of the entire universe of an organization. Universe means the total population or total number of units in an organization. Therefore, we select a sample from this universe and make studies about the universe through this sample. A sample design is a definite plan determined before any data are actually collected for obtaining a sample from a given universe. There are different methods of selecting samples such as random sampling, stratified sampling, systematic sampling, etc. that we will study in detail in the next modules. Next is collection of data. The data forms the fundamental basis of any study. So the collection of data is of great importance. There are several ways of collecting the appropriate data. Collect, uh, collecting primary data is very essential and the primary data collecting techniques are observation method, direct personal interview method, telephone interview method, questionnaire method and scheduled method. And that we will study in the uh, coming modules. Okay. Next is execution of the project. The researcher has to see that the project is executed in a systematic manner and in time. 
he should make necessary preparations for successful conduct of the project. If the data are to be collected through questionnaires, questionnaires are to be properly prepared. If the data are collected through interviewers, a arrangements must be made for selection and training of the interviewers. The next step is processing, analysis and interpretation of data by statistical methods. The processing of data consists of classification, tabulation and coding. By classification and tabulation, the unwieldy data can be condensed into few manageable and purposeful groups and tables so that further analysis becomes simple. Coding converts the data into symbols and small figures so that the data can be easily dealt with. Editing improves the quality of data since it is at this stage the data which is irrelevant can be dropped. Analysis and interpretation of data results in observation, analysis, conclusion, induction and deduction. Now we can study testing of hypothesis. That is the next term. After analysis of the data, the researcher can test the hypothesis which he has formulated in his research studies. For testing the hypothesis, there are different statistical tests just like t-test, f-test, z-test, etc. Depending upon the nature of data and conclusions to be arrived, one or more of these tests can be applied. Testing of hypothesis will, re will result in either accepting or rejecting the hypothesis. Once the hypothesis is accepted, the proposition is concluded to be valid. So that is very important step and the next step is preparation of the report or thesis. The researcher has to prepare the report of the work and its outcome. A report is a detailed description of what has been done and how it has been done with respect to a particular area or topic. The report should contain the preliminary section, the main body and the end section. And that we will study in the fifth module. And now we can go to the next section that is selection of a good research or criteria for a good research. What are the criteria of a good research? First one, systematic. Research should have a systematic plan of work. A specific program helps in monitoring and carrying out the research within a budgeted time and cost and at the same time yields conclusive results. Second one, logical. A good research is logical. A clear logical argument is required to communicate an ordered sequence of ideas and activities and hence support research conclusions. Next is verifiable. The results of a good research should be verifiable. The research of the research if repeated again and again it should yield the same conclusion. Okay. Next is frank. A good research is frank, that is, it lists the flaws in the research and also explains the impact of such flaws on research results. Fifth point is well-defined goal. A good research has a well-defined goal. It should have a clear statement of objectives. Next is knowledge bank. A good research should contribute to the existing body of knowledge. Now we can go to the very important topic, types of research. You will get two marks question, you will get a five marks question and also you will get 15 marks question. And if you get 15 marks question, you have to write all these types of research and also you can uh, mention about what is a research, what are the objectives, etc. so that you get 15 out of 15. Okay, now we can study the first one that is a basic research or pure or fundamental research. Research for the sake of enhancing knowledge is known as basic research. It is done with the intention of overpowering the unknown. It is an intellectual exploration and the outcome of such research may or may not have practical relevance. It is primarily concerned with developing and formulating theories and generalizations. Such a research is time and cost intensive. 
Second research is descriptive research. Descriptive research refers to a research that provides an accurate portrayal of characteristics of a particular individual, situation or group. It describes the present state of affairs. The researcher has no control over the variables. He can only report what has happened or what is happening. Next, we can study analytical research. Analytical research is based on data or information already available with the researcher. The available data are analyzed to draw conclusions. It involves critical thinking. Doctors, students, psychologists, etc. use analytical research. Next is applied research or need-based research. Research aimed at finding solutions to problems faced by the society, government or business concerns is called applied research. Its aim is to discover solution for an immediate problem facing the society or an organization. Example, family planning research, marketing research, etc. Next is empirical research. Empirical research is a research that applies observation and experiments as the main modes of gathering data. The data collected in this way is referred to as empirical evidence, which is subjected to qualitative and quantitative analysis and then used to answer empirical questions. This process involves a great deal of planning and is considered accurate as the researcher <coughs> records what is observed. Sorry for the disturbance. And it includes different steps just like observation, induction that is hypothesis formation, deduction that is deducting consequences of hypothesis, testing and then comes evaluation that is outcome of testing is evaluated. Next, we can study qualitative and quantitative research. Qualitative research collect qualitative data drawn from observations, interviews and documentary evidence and anal analyze it using quantitative data analysis methods. The qualitative data includes data in the form of text, images, sounds, etc. This method is more appropriate in the earlier stages of research. It is subjective in nature. Next is quantitative research. It collects the numerical data that is data in the form of numbers and analyzes it using statistical methods. It concentrates on measuring the scale, range, frequency, etc. of a phenomena. Now we can study what is a conceptual research. Conceptual research is that related to some abstract idea or theory. It is generally used by philosophers and thinkers to develop new concepts or reinterpret the existing ones. This analysis is preferred in social sciences and philosophy. Next, it is historical research. It's a type of research that examines past events or combinations of events to arrive at an account of what has happened in the past. It can show patterns that occurred in the past and over time which can help us to see where we came from and what kinds of solutions we have used in the past. Next is ex post facto research. Research based on scientific examination of relationship between independent variable and dependent variable of a problem is known as ex post facto research. And in case of descriptive research, I didn't mention the different methods. There are three main methods for descriptive research that can be done through observational methods, case study methods and survey methods. Observational method includes by closely observing, we can study the human behavior Case study method includes in-depth study of an individual or group of individuals or a social unit or a family or even a cultural group or an entire community. Survey method. In this method, 
participants answer questions administered through interviews and questionnaires. I mentioned this because you might have a question, what is a case study method? What is a survey method? And you have to study in detail the primary data te uh, techniques, that is observational methods, case study method. Again, we have to study that and all. So no need to worry. I will teach you in the next module. So I think we have completed first module and you have to study what is research process, elaborate its different steps. That is an essay question. Types of research, you have to study all these because it can come at a, come as a research, as a 15 marks question or as a 5 marks question. Then you have to study the criteria for good research and whatever I have taught. These are all very important and very simple to just make it easy by understanding this. Okay, so thank you for today and we can continue with the second module in the next uh, PPT presentation. Thank you.